Hello everyone, my name is Greg and I'm a .NET UI Control Product Manager for Meshes Inc, formerly known as Grape City. And today I'm going to be demonstrating some intermediate .NET development application working with WPF UI controls to build a desktop dashboard using some best practices for .NET UI controls, including MVVM and dynamic data binding principles, all while using Microsoft Visual Studio and coding with C Sharp and XAML UI markup. This is not a complete beginner level topic as I will dive right into using Visual Studio, jumping between files, and using terms without necessarily stopping to explain everything. But if you have some basic .NET or C-sharp skills and you're looking to learn a couple new tips or tricks, then this video is for you. But before I get to the coding, I do wanna go over some dashboard considerations and show you a blueprint of the application and the code that I'm going to write. Dashboards, as you may know, are essential to viewing and analyzing data in a quick, meaningful way. So think about the dashboard in your car. They provide a view of the data to the users in such a way that they can quickly understand what's going on, gain insights, and possibly make informed decisions. For business applications, the dashboard typically shows daily and quarterly metrics, and it visualizes the status of something like employee productivity, customer transactions, or total revenue and so on. Dashboards may also provide analysis for you in the form of aggregation and grouping. They also can provide user interaction in the form of filtering and drill down. This allows the user to look closer at some segment of the data. And what makes a dashboard different from just any software application is that dashboards focus on delivering quick insight to the user and they typically do not perform any other business function like data entry or order processing. So in essence, Dashboards focus on data visualization, and they're basically like a single page report. And in a world where we're not printing as many documents, dashboards can replace traditional reporting tools. Now, since we're working with .NET, it means we're gonna create the dashboard in Microsoft Visual Studio. And in this session, we're focused on developing a dashboard for the Windows desktop. Now, web dashboards can give a broader reach but many companies are still building desktop dashboards as an extension of their Windows application development. So the next consideration is that we need to decide which .NET desktop platform to choose. So let me go through the various desktop platforms and show you the pros and cons. You have the classic Windows forms, you have WPF, which stands for Windows Presentation Foundation, and WinUI. Those are the current three that I would consider. WinForms and WPF are both built on traditional Windows libraries like Win32, and they've been updated to support .NET Core, so they aren't legacy by any means. Typically, people choose WinForms because they're familiar with it, and it can be a lot faster you know, to develop forms over data. But WinForms can be more work in the long run to customize its appearance, and it's not as MDVM friendly when you're working with data binding. WinUI is the latest platform from Microsoft to develop Windows applications, Specifically, you're building a universal Windows Store style app, and it means it's likely uh, installed and run like a Windows Store app and not easily run like an executable. And WinUI could likely be replaced when Windows 12 is released. So it's not as long-term of, of, of an investment like we've seen Windows 8 with WinRT get replaced by Windows 10 UWP, and now Windows 11 WinUI, and so on. So, because of all that, I think WPF is the best UI platform for new desktop development. And why else, you may ask? Uh, WPF utilizes the full operating system power like WinForms, but it's designed using modern .NET best practices like XAML and MDVM. And since it's based on XAML, it's easily portable to other Microsoft.NET frameworks like WinUI and even MAUI. It also offers better styling with control templates and data binding with its data context concepts and scaling for high resolution displays. And so while WinForms may be faster to build for your initial form, in the long run, WPF is easier to customize. Uh, XAML is like HTML, it's a proven layout design language. And WPF uses DirectX under the hood, which means it's high performance. And consider this, that every new non-web development framework that Microsoft has put out in the past 10 years or so has followed WPF in terms of using XAML to define its UI. You're looking at Silverlight, Windows Phone, WinRT, UWP, Xamarin, 
Maui and WinUI, all use XAML. Both WinForms and WPF have stood the test of time. And whereas WinUI may be replaced in a few years with Windows 12, um, and the XAML platforms, including WinUI and WPF, are designed to better work with MVVM application structure. So because of all that, I declare WPF as the winner, and that's what I'm gonna be using today to build my desktop dashboard. So now before we get to that, let me go over some dashboard structure and also explain the MVVM application structure a bit more. So MVVM stands for Model View View Model, and it helps cleanly separate an application's business and presentation logic from its user interface. Maintaining a clean separation between these helps address many different development issues as it makes the application easier to test and maintain and scale. In addition to organizing your code, following MVVM help also helps organize your files. The main attributes though are binding the view elements to your view model. And then you put all of your business logic, your c -sharp code, goes in that view model. This includes your data binding and your command logic. Um, and this strategy eliminates code from the code behind file that is tightly tied to the view. Code that's tightly tied to the user interface is not as scalable or testable. And since it's not organized at all, it can be difficult to maintain. And the way the MVVM works is that the model and view model sends notifications to update the view. And this is all handled through the I notify property changed interface, which is also one of the key elements to implementing MVVM. And I'll show you that in a bit. There are various libraries out there that help you develop with MVVM, um, but really they're not required. All you have to do is just follow the basic design principles and use I notify property changed and, you, and you've got it. And so MVVM is part of what I will be demonstrating today as I build this WPF dashboard. So here's a mock-up sketch of the dashboard. It's pretty simple because this is a short session. The tables on the left are basically employees, orders, order details. And I'm pulling these from the Northwind O data service. On the dashboard, you'll be able to select the employee at the top and the table will filter to show the employee's orders. And then when you select an order, the order details will display at the bottom of the table. As for data visualization, on the right side of the dashboard, we'll add some charts. Um, in a real world scenario, you typically aren't able to just plot raw data, like from a table, right into a chart. It's not usually useful information. The data typically needs to be aggregated. It needs to be grouped. It needs to be manipulated into a sort of a, a dynamic view for the chart. So for this, I will be writing a few uh, dynamic data binding scripts in C Sharp that will aggregate my data so they can group and summarize data in more interesting ways um, than just the plain data model allows us. And since we want to follow MVVM, here's how I will structure the project and the various entities for this dashboard. Our view will consist of a combo box, some data grids, and some charts. And our view model will expose various collections or lists from our data model, things like the employees, the orders, the order details, there's gonna be six main collections, and there's including three queried lists. Now these queried lists are generated from the core three lists that will be populated from our data source. And then the model is basically just a collection of the classes that define each entity, really simple, like the employee model, the order, and the order detail. And all of our C-sharp code will live in the view model, and like some in the model, and the view will strictly be just XAML, clean and BBM. So now let me jump over to Visual Studio. Uh, first, I'm gonna show you a tour. Uh, I've already created this WPF application here for .NET 8. And I've already created a model folder containing the employee class, order class, and here are a few properties from the Northwind uh, order table. The model allows us to provide custom data fields as well. Like here, I've created a field named total, which is simply multiplying the quantity by the price. But, so essentially, we can start to transform and manipulate our data here in the model class without having to put any of this type of logic in my view. I'm also connecting here to the North Window data service, as I mentioned. And for this, I've created just a simple class here that handles the actual connection and pulling down the data. Every application here would be very different. And this is not necessarily MVVM um, like specific, but here I'm using, I'm actually using the component one O data connectors. 
uh, filling my collections of order or details and employees. And this will pull all the data from the tables at once when the dashboard loads. And then the drill down and filtering will happen later on the client. Uh, over here in the view models folder, I've defined my main view model. This will be the layer between my model and the view. And this is where we define bindable collections of our data objects that we want our view to bind to. Um, notice the view model here inherits I notify property changed. This, is a, uh, this allows us to get instant UI updates when the data changes or when it lazy loads without having to wire up all of that yourself. For my dashboard view, I've defined just one window here and predefined uh, a starting point with a combo box and data grids displaying my order uh, employee orders. And notice at the top, we've defined an instance of our view model. And here we've set it as the data context for our page. This is a key MVVM data binding technique. This allows us to now bind any property of our UI to properties that we expose in the view model. So notice the combo box here I've bound to the collection of employees. And this employees collection is exposed on the view model. And for the data grid, here I'm using the component one flex grid for WPF from the c1.wpf.grid NuGet package. And this flex grid is bound to the orders collection from my view model. So now let's go ahead and uh, fill out this dashboard a little bit more here. Let's add a second flex grid here to the bottom uh, by dragging it over from the toolbox into the XAML or onto the design surface. And we want this grid to fill the space. So let's uh, reset the layout. And this will remove the unnecessary margins and padding because in WPF we want it to be scalable and not use explicit sizes for most of the UI components. Now for the second flex grid, I'm going to bind it to my order details. So, all right, now that should be it. Now I, I want to do is at least run this application and see what we're working with so far. Okay, so far my view model is literally just spitting out the full collections here. So we've not really wired up any of the drill down yet. That's gonna be next. Now, if we weren't following the MVVM design pattern, we would just listen to the combo box click event or selection change event, and then try to grab the data and filter it. But the best practice is to think about every object or collection or view of the data that we want in our view needs to be cre uh, created in the view model. So how am I going to do that? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to create a new property in the view model called selected employee. So this will return the employee object that is basically selected from that combo box. And because I'm listening to the I notify property changed interface here, anytime this is changed, those updates will be automatically reflected on the UI. We also want to change the orders logic here to honor the selected employee. So rather than returning all of the orders, we filter right here in the view model to return the ones that belong to that selected employee. All of this logic lives right here in the view model. By putting all this code here, it keeps this business logic separated from the view. It also keeps our models clean. Now, the view model is where you do all this data manipulation. And as a result, it makes our code more testable and reusable. Because think, consider this, we may have multiple views sharing the same view model data. Now, what I can do is go back to my view here and bind the combo box selection to the selected employee. To do that, we're gonna use the selected item property and we create the binding similar to the item source. And I need to set the mode equal to two-way here so that two-way means it's like collecting input from the user, not only displaying. And I'm also going to set the selected index here to zero, just so that we get a default selection when the window loads. All right, now let's build it and see this in action. Okay, so now when I select one of my employees, you'll see here that the orders are being updated and filtered. Next, what I want to do is drill down into the second grid. Um, and to do that, we'll introduce another property, this time named Selected Order. Next, I want to drill down into the second grid. And to do that, we'll introduce another property, this time named Selected Order. Let's go back to the view model and add a new property. Notice in the selected order here, I'm also passing in an additional notify property change for my order details, because now when the orders change, I need to tell my view, hey, look at the order details again, we're updating that. 
And to tell the view model to update the selected order, we need to add two-way binding to the selected item property of the flex group. And this is also very similar to the combo box. Now let's run this again and see if it's working. Uh, just like that, we've created a dynamic dashboard following MVVM with notified properties in the view model, updating our data on the fly. Now to complete my dashboard, I've added some data visualization controls like charts and gauges. For this, I'm continuing to use the Component 1 WPF libraries, including FlexChart, FlexPy, and Bullet Graph. So here I've defined a second column with a couple charts and gauges. And I've also, since I've already demonstrated the concept that we want to follow here with the data binding, let me just show you what is being done. The bullet graph is bound to a few properties in the view model, such as good value and bad value in the limits. In the view model, I've written some code to calculate the total sales price for the orders based on the selected employee. Plus I've hard coded some values like the target, the good, the bad. And if we, if we had a more complex data source, we could determine these using actual data values. But for this bullet graph, it's just going to be hard-coded uh, ranges. But the target value will be dynamic. Next, let's look at the charts. The pie chart here is using the FlexPy control, and it will show sales by country and bound to a view model property as such. So our view model here is returning a dynamic collection this time. So a dynamic data collection is not necessarily defined by one business object. So in this case, our pie chart needs the data to be formatted in such a special way that no other collection in our view really needs, where each slice you know, is represented by a different metric and, and the legend and so on. This rarely would line up with you know, a straight up business object or table from your data source. So this is the perfect uh, scenario to use a dynamically bound collection. So what the code is doing here is aggregating the sales by country, and then it returns a dynamic collection to the view where each item has a country and a total sales value for that country. So by using a dynamic collection here, it allows us to format the data in this particular way without having to define a custom business object for just one pie chart. And uh, now down to the third component here, which is the flex chart. This is going to display a bar graph. To bind the chart, we set the item source to our collection. This collection of tracked orders will have a year and account, just like the, the pie chart. This is going to be a dynamic collection, uh, giving us total orders per year. Now for the Cartesian chart, we set the binding X property to the year to display the years along the X axis. And then we can add multiple series to the chart. In this case, I just have one. Um, and each series binding property can be bound to whatever value is plotted on the Y axis. In this case, it's count. Now back over here in the view model, we're generating another dynamic collection of orders with an aggregated count per year. Now let's run this and see the final dashboard. The final result shows the charts animating and updating whenever we change the selected employee. And one of the key things you probably noticed is that I didn't write any code behind in my view. All of the logic for this application was written in the view model. You'll also notice that I threw on one of the Component 1 WPF themes just to make our dashboard look a little fancier. But that basically completes my dashboard. If you'd like to try any of the WPF controls I used in this application, you can look up Component 1 or C1 controls in NuGet or visit developer.meshes.com slash component1. The former Grape City company, now named Meshes, has been a longtime sponsor of Microsoft Build, so we thank you for watching and have a nice day.